I have to admit that sometimes some tasks in SAP can be quite boring and mundane. Especially if you are an end user and you want to do a repetitive task multiple times, then it is quite boring. So in this video, we are going to discuss how to automate such kind of a mundane tasks by using SAP scripting. Hey, this is Abhiram and welcome back to my channel. Hope you are liking the videos that I am posting. Please do like the videos, share and subscribe to the channel to motivate me to post many such wonderful videos. If you are interested in contributing to me, you can do a one-time contribution by clicking the thanks button below this video. If you want to do a repetitive contribution, then become a super member to this channel by clicking on join and you will get benefits like member exclusive videos and coupon codes and many such things. So let's jump into the video. Let us say you want to do a repetitive task, for example, like posting a customer invoice and FB70 transaction code. This video is not limited to only one particular transaction code, but whatever be it, any repetitive task that you want to do it in SAP just by changing values, then you can follow this technique of SAP scripting. So first thing to enable SAP scripting, you need to be in SAP signature theme. If you're not sure how you can be into the SAP signature theme, then just go to the SAP logon pad, select the options, and here you have the theme design under visual design. So here you need to select the SAP signature theme and then click OK. This is how the SAP signature theme looks like. And you need to click on this button, customize local layout. And here you can see the option of script recording and playback. Now, sometimes some organizations might block SAP recording and scripting for security purposes. But in that case, you need to contact the administrator. But otherwise, this is a wonderful option to automate all the mundane tasks. So first click on script recording and playback. Now just give some name to this one and select the path where the SAP script needs to be done. So for example, I'm giving it as FB70 underscore TSDL2. So if you want to start the recording, then just click on the record button. Now whatever action you do on this screen, that will be recorded in the form of an SAP visual basic script, which we can later on do a little bit of customization so that the system can automatically fetch data from an Excel sheet and do all the postings for us. So now what we need to do? First thing, let us go to a transaction code. And before we actually start this one, how can we be sure that the scripting has started or not? So you can see at the bottom of this one, here you can see there is a scripting button, the recording is on. And now you need to perform the steps that you want to be processed by the system automatically. So first I'll open a transaction code. I'll go to FB70. So it is quite normal, like how we do post a normal FB70 invoice. In the same way, I'm going to post all the details here. So I'm giving my customer. I'll give my invoice date and I'm giving some amount. I'm just taking some text as text one, two, three. And here I'm giving some revenue account and give the same amount and I'm giving a profit center. Here is the profit center. So these are the details and I'm just clicking on save. It is giving me a warning, hit enter, enter once again. And the document has been successfully posted. So these are the steps that we want to repeat. For example, if you want to post some 500 documents, I don't have any custom program, you just need to keep on changing the amounts. So how can we do that is what we're going to see now. So now we have shown the SAP system what all steps to be executed. So as per your requirement, ensure that you are filling all those fields which the system should consider for you. So I have filled only a few sample fields which I'm showing it for a demo, but you fill all the fields that you want. So now we need to stop the recording. So go to this window here and click on stop. The moment we click on stop, in this particular path, a recording file will be created. So I'll go to this path. Let me open this folder. And here, if you see, there is a FB70 TSDL2 recording. So now right click this one, go to edit, and this will open in notepad. And this is the visual basic code that has been created by the SAP recording screen. This is the SAP script. So here you can see what all details that we have given are all captured. And it also capturing what is the field in which that particular value is passed. This is an account. This is the document date. This is the amount. This is the text. So all those details have been captured successfully. Now, all I need to do for the system to automatically process the same steps again with this script is just go to that script file and double click this one so that we can execute it. But before you actually execute this one, ensure that you are having an SAP GUI window open. Now go back to this file and double click this one. You will get a prompt that the script is attempting to access the GUI. Click on OK. And if you see here in the same screen, already the system had started executing those steps and it had posted another document successfully within a few seconds. Now, this is one way of executing this one. Always you need to change the data, whatever you want to pass it here one by one. And if you want to do it a one-time execution, then this method is fine. 
But what if we want to execute this multiple times without manual intervention? We are having the data ready in one Excel file and the system should automatically pick all these data from this Excel and automatically post the documents. That we can do it by adding few magical lines of code here. It's a very small code. No experience on coding is required. We just need to add these lines so that the script can identify an Excel sheet and identify the data that is maintained in that Excel sheet and accordingly map it with all these commands and process it automatically. So the lines of code are just paste this one and here if you see this one is creating an Excel application and this is the file name with the path where you are storing this Excel information. This is the path that I have given and this is the sheet name in that Excel sheet. So for example, if I am maintaining this Excel sheet as FB70. And in this Excel sheet, there is a sheet name called sheet one, which I have given. And I have maintained data in different columns. Now I need to tell the system what is the data in each of this column refers to. So for that, I am adding these lines. Depending upon the number of columns you want to maintain the data for, you need to add those number of lines here. So I'm saying that I is the row. So take the data from the second row and J is the column. Take the data from the first column. And I'm saying that the first column here is, let me put it side by side. So J is equal to one says that this is customer. Yes. And J is then J2 is the date. So I'm just giving the name for this one. This is BLDAT. If you see here, this is BLDAT, which is nothing but the posting date. And for the posting date, I am giving the name as date two, or I can also give it as posting date. And here I'm giving it as amount. And the next one is text, which is the header text. And next one is the GL, which is the revenue GL. And this is the item amount. And this is the profit center. So I have maintained data in all these columns. It is not necessary that whatever the names that you're giving here should match with the column names here. You can still have a different columns. Just maintain that particular indicator from which row and which column the system should consider these values. So I'm giving it on the first column and the second row so that the first row I can maintain as a headers for my own reference. Now, once you add this piece of code here, you need to do a little bit of change here. Whatever the values that you're passing now, you do not want to pass the direct values, but you want to refer to the values from the Excel sheet. So instead of giving the customer number, what I will give is I will refer it to as customer because I have given the name here as customer. So I'll give it as customer. And similarly for the date also, I'm giving it as posting date so that the system will automatically refer to this posting date from the Excel sheet. And I'm changing all of this. This is amount. This is text. And this is the GL and this is the amount too and this is profit center PC and there is one more piece of code after you have done this one the system should process to the next line so that if there is more than one for example I'm maintaining here with more than one I'm saying this is 150 and this is text 2 and this is the same GL and this is 150 so the system should process all the rows of data that is maintained in the Excel sheet for that there is a small bit of code that you need to add here and this is the code you just need this code and this code will also tell once all the rows have been processed it will also give you a status message that all rows have been processed i'll paste this code to all the super members of this channel i'll share the link for the super members now save this one i'm saving this and closing this one and i'm also saving this excel sheet and close it now we just want to execute this one in the sap script so how can we do that go to this option and click on sap recording and playback you can select that script file here for example the fb70 tsdl2 you can select it here or you can directly double click this one here so we are going to double click this one and let us see how this posts so this is the screen maybe it is taking in a different screen no this is the one The second document has also been posted and after that it is giving a prompt that all the two rows have been processed successfully. So this is how you can maintain data in your Excel sheet. Whatever data you want, whatever columns you want, you can maintain it in the Excel sheet and number of rows and just with a little bit of change in the SAP VB script, you can automate your entire tasks. Again, this is not restricted to any single transaction code. This will refer to anything that you do on the SAP screen. All you need to do is Ensure your recording includes all those fields that you want to be processed by the system.
Hope you have found this video useful. Do like the video, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel to keep me motivated to post many such wonderful videos. Thank you. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.